All right, welcome back to another video on how to secure yourself financially, especially looking at the Morningstar Investing Classroom. <clears throat> so Morningstar is this North American financial firm that offer is management service, management financial service in uh, literacy and education especially for investors so here I look at the feature content so far from all of this model the feature content stocks funds portfolio bonds ETF and ESG this environment social and governance right from this seven topic so far I am right now looking at the feature content which is staying investment in the market. Things to know is uh, stock has provided the highest return and the increase in the wealth. Investor must have discipline and patience. Uh, holding on can pay off in the long run. And on average, after the end of a recession, small cap stocks, which are uh, stocks whose market capitalization is between 250 million to 2 billion. Uh, so, on average, small cap stocks outperform those of the large stock after a month, six months, a year, and three years after the end of that recession. And also, is to understand what is interest rate and how the Fed, the Federal Reserve, try to achieve the federal fund rate, which is a short-term interest rate that indicate how much or the rate at which commercial banks lend from each other overnight. So the federal, fund, the federal Reserve try to achieve that target by buying and selling security. And security is uh, financial, uh, non-fungible, or fungible financial instruments that hold some monetary value, right? So, again, the Fed <clears throat> tried to achieve the federal fund rate by uh, buying and selling security in the federal open market. I also looked at, much like in the stock market, the bond market or these loanable fund markets where you have different interest rates reflecting loans uh, yeah reflecting a uh, loan mm -hmm. so uh, you have in this loanable fund market you have interest rates uh, different uh, of Risk and time length. So, <clears throat> the thing with this is that um, looking at these different short term rates. A short term interest rate, interest that uh, that are less that are a year, from a year or less. You have treasury bill, federal fund rate, and one year maturity government bonds. So this loanable fund market or the bond market is also affected by the state of the economy, and see how uh, these contraction and expansions affect that. By looking at the market in terms of recovery sections, where uh, is very very illustrative for investors who may want to have a long term investment, such as retirement, and also to see how the risk decrease over time by looking at this historical data and get a bigger picture of how the market performs. So 
understand this market contraction and expansion that they have happened ten in the last forty nine years from nineteen seventy three to twenty twenty one. In nineteen seventy three, it was the beginning of the Yom Kippur War. It was a war made by the uh, Petro monarchies to Israel uh, and U.S. back those Israel forces. So this Petro monarchy performed a U.S. oil emb uh, embargo. And yeah, that's a sensitive topic. You don't talk about it. Hey, hey, you don't talk about this. Uh, this is the elephant in the room. But in any case, after I saw this 10 market downturn in these 49 uh, years, see how all of this uh, different contraction happened at random times and, and marks an end of a stock market cycle or a complete round of a stock price fluctuation, right? Um, understanding the contraction, which uh, it means that when the stock market uh, is when the stock market peak uh, fall from ten percent or more, and again this might happen at random times and may last for the different period of time. So that is the contraction and the expansion, which measure is the, per, the recovery of an index from the very bottom of the contraction from its previous peak and the subsequent performance until a next level uh, peak before 10% decline. So understanding this, and the things to know from uh, this section is investors who have, should have a long-term investment horizon to allow their investments to grow. And then I look at the market downturns in recovery. Again, this is one of the things that struck me the most because I was able to see that the U.S. equity market, and the equity meaning is the total amount of asset minus it is liability, in the context of a company is the network or the share that you own from a particular company uh, yeah, and in the context of property uh, is the total value of that property minus it is liens and liens is this legal right of someone else to possess your property until a debt is repaired or an obligation is for example, there are several types of liens, like bank liens, so anytime you ask for a loan to purchase, let's say, a car, the bank automatically issue a lien on that uh, car. If, for example, you're unable to pay that, so they seize that property, they seize that car, and sell that to repay the debt. So there might there might be so in that particular context, uh, you might find a business, you know, a lucrative and a huge amount of business as well. But in any case, right? Uh, also, you have these judgment liens, and these judgment liens uh, are issued by a judge, uh, specifically in a lawsuit. So this judge, uh, this judgment uh, liens <clears throat> provide to the demand in a non-payment case to seize and liquidate some of the accused assets, right? You also have is the mechanic liens, which is uh, this is something interesting. So mechanic liens uh, are or meaning is. Uh, it's a contract between the owner and the construction, the builders, or this construction firm, right? If the owner isn't able to pay for that, uh, you can is, uh, seize their property. So let me take a look at here the mechanical liens or uh, 
Yeah, to understand that, so we lean on this. All right. <clears throat> Type of leans we have bank leans, judgment leans, mechanics leans. All right. So mechanic lean by looking at this is a contract. Well, it's a guarantee of payment. Okay, so a mechanic lien is a guarantee of payments to builders, contractors, in construction fear that build or repay structure. It's a guarantee, okay? So again, all of these liens is a guarantee that you're going to be, pay, you're going to pay for them. And, and the more uh, technical aspect is, well, is this legal right of someone else to possess your property? until an obligation is met or a debt is repaid. But after all, it's a guarantee, you know? Uh, that when you ask a loan, you're going to pay that. That's a lien, for example, in the bank or in the judgment, right? That you were able to pay to the demand uh, by liquidating is the accused asset or some of the accused assets, okay? Uh, in the context of the mechanic liens, which is this guarantee to uh, pay builders, construction, builders, contractors, and construction firms that build or repay structures. So you have the mechanic liens, and this also extends to suppliers of materials and subcontractors that cover building repairs as well. So the lien ensure that the work may are paid before anyone else in the event of liquidation. Okay, so this ensure me that you're gonna that you are going to pay the builders, contractors, or uh, construction firms uh, that right. So in the context here of the mechanic liens. Okay, so this mechanic, this guarantee can be attached to a real property. Okay, so if the owner failed to pay to a contractor for their service offer, if the debtor never pays, the contractor will go to a court and get a judgment against the non-paying part. Exactly, which is le which lead to this judgment lead, right? So if the contractor or if the debtor never pays, the contractor could go to a court and get a judgment against the non-paying party, whereby property or asset can be auctioned off to pay the lien holder. Many service providers have the option to place a lien to secure payment, including construction company and dry cleaners. So again, this is, is a guarantee that in the context here of the construction, okay, this guarantee or this lien is attached to a real property if an owner fails to pay a contractor for a service offer. If the debtor never pays, the contractor could go to the court and get a judgment against the non-party, the non-paying party. You also have the real estate, and again, which is a legal right to seize and sell a real estate property if a contract is not fulfilled. Some real estate liens are automatically put in place, such as in the case of mortgage or hipotecas in Spanish. So when a party borrows money from a bank to purchase their home, the bank places a lien on the house until the mortgage is paid off. However, some real estate liens are due to non-payment to a creditor or financial institution, and as a result, are involuntary and non-consensual liens. <clears throat> but in any case, in their real, there are real estate liens that is a legal right to seize and sell a real estate property if a contract is not fulfilled, and some real estate liens are automatically put in place, such as in the case of mortgage, okay? So anytime you ask to purchase 
Really, anytime you ask. Okay. So anytime you ask uh, to purchase, uh, any anytime you ask a loan to purchase a home or to maintain or to buy land, uh, the mortgage is this is this security? Is this guarantee? Are you going to pay them? Of regular payments that are divided into principal and interest. The, the property then serves as collateral to secure the loan. The principal, which depends on the context, the principal is the original amount that you invest in a security or uh, the original amount that you borrow. Mm -hmm. principal, principal is the most commonly used to refer to the original sum of money borrowed in a loan or put in an investment. This is the two main applications of principal. Is the, original, is the original amount investment in a security or the original amount uh, borrowed or the original, the original amount that you borrow that remains on pay. Okay? So, uh, so now that I know what real estate liens are, which is this legal right of someone else to seize and sell a real estate property if a contract is not fulfilled, and some real estates are automatically put in place, such as in the case of mortgage lien, right? Such as in the case of mortgage lien, uh, when a party borrow money from a bank to purchase their house. Okay. And then you have tax liens. So tax liens, there are also several statutory liens. So tax liens are created by law instead of a contract, such as in, uh, like in real estate, mechanic, um, judgment, or bank. So tax liens are created is, uh, by law instead of a contract and the very common type of lien in this field is taxation so when the law often allows tax authority to put liens on the property of the delinquent taxpayer for example municipality can use liens to recover unpaid property taxes mm -hmm. So in the United States, if a taxpayer becomes delinquent and does not demonstrate an indication of paying own taxes, the Internal Revenue Service may place a legal claim against a taxpayer property, including the taxpayer home, vehicle, and bank account. So if for some reason you're not paying your tax as you should, yeah, and uh, so the tax authority can make a legal claim against your home, vehicle, and bank account. So a tax lien also affect the taxpayer ability to sell existing assets and obtain credit. The only way to release a federal tax lien is to fully pay the tax owned or reach an asset a settlement with the IRS. The IRA has the authority to seize a taxpayer asset who ignore a tax lien. Typically, the IRS uses lien for delinquent taxes as the last resort. But it's important here to understand that lien exists. So what are so what liens are and what are the type of liens? You have bank liens, judgment, mechanic real estate and tax lien so that lead me is to what I was talking about is that the thing that struck me the most from the market on terms and recovery section it was looking at the different time or the period of recovery uh, 
or how long the recovery has took uh, when <clears throat> in the U.S. equity market they have been dramatically uh, economic collapse or, or wisdom term or recession. So the most or the the most important uh, or the most severe it was at the beginning of the Great Depression in 1929, where the stock lost over 80% of their value, specifically 83.4%, and the recovery took 12 years. More recently, the stock lost 44.7% at the early 2000 uh, during the dot com bubble, and it took four years uh, for the market to recover. And then in the 2007-2008, during the banking and debt crisis, it took over three years in recovery period, right? Yes, of course, it has been shrink in, on each one of those iterations, but the thing here is that it's time. It's time that you are hoping that the market's recovery, you can get into the market or hopefully to getting into the market, right? So, the things to know here is that even though stocks are prone to loss or are sudden to... stocks are prone to sudden loss value for any reason. So that now leads to the market in terms and recovery <clears throat> or the bull or the bear a bull market, but with respect to some asset class, uh, such as bond, <clears throat> okay, such as bond stocks, uh, some other asset class, and some simple portfolio structures. And we will also look at the correlation of different assets with the broader market. So first, looking at the bond yields during recession, and bond yields are driven by factors such as supply and demand. Uh, yeah, sup supply, uh, supply and demand, uh, monetary policy, and inflation expectations. So the Fed has in its primary tools the discount rates and the federal fund rates to implement monetary policy. So the <clears throat> discount rate, which either the interest rate that the federal reserves charge to banks for short-term loans, or is the rate used to for the discount cash flow analysis, or to the expected discount uh, or the future discount cash flow. This discount cash flow is just an evaluation method to know what is the real value of this property based on this expected future cash flow. Okay? And, well, cash flow is the movement of money in and out, out of a company. So, by looking at this and understand what cash flow is, I then look at the beginner guide uh, to financial statement. And this is something that is from the SEC, right? So when you look at the cash flow here, looking at this. <clears throat> and this cash flow. So by looking at this beginner guide to financial standing and see that if you're able to read nutrition labels or soccer or baseball or box score, you can understand 
the basic on how to read fi a financial statement. If you're able to follow a recipe or applying for a loan, you can understand basic accounting. And the basic aren't difficult. So, <clears throat> the SEC.gov uh, has this broad uh, section where they're going to show you how to read the basic part of financial statements just like uh, or just as the CPA the class teach you how to perform basic uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation understand or, or looking at this uh, section uh, I'm going to learn how to read this basic financial statement but it won't, it won't train me to be an accountant just like a CPA, a CPA, CPR class will teach you to be a cardiac doctor. But it can give you the confidence to be able to look at a set of financial statements and make sense of that. And this is exactly what I want to do. Okay? Not only by looking at other financial statements, but also is to apply those financial statements to myself, to my business. Okay, so what is uh, what financial statement are, or what is financial statement, right? Um, so from this immortal line from the Jerry from the Cuba Gooding Jr. in the Jerry Maguire line that show me the money, right? <clears throat> so, well, that's financial statement. They show you the money, where the company money came from, where is it now, and where it went. Four main financial statements. Balance sheets, income flow, so the balance sheets, income flow, cash flow, and a statement of shareholders' equity. So, you have balance, balance sheets. Income statements, cash flow statements, and statement of shareholder equity. So the balance sheets indicate or show you what a company owns and would have owned at a fixed period of time. The income statements show you how much money a company made and spend over a period of time. Cash flow show you is the movement of money between a company and the outside world over a period of time, and the or the four financial statement called uh, the statement of shareholder equity shows change in the interest of a company shareholder over time. Mm -hmm. So this. Uh, statement of shareholder equity. Okay. Statement of shareholder equity. <clears throat> okay. Statement of shareholder equity. Yeah, the statement of shareholder equity show change in the interest of shareholder or show change in the interest of the company shareholder over time. Mm, interesting. Okay. Okay. So let's going to look at each one of them. So let's gonna let's gonna look at the let's gonna look of the first three financial statements in more detail. But you have balance sheets. <clears throat> so balance sheet provide you detailed information about the company assets, liability, and shareholder equity. And if you know what is equity is, in this context, is how much uh, someone or uh, how much someone, how much stocks someone possess in a company, or how much stocks own, how much uh, stocks you own from that. Then you have assets, liabilities, and shareholder equity. <clears throat> So assets are things that company own that have value 
and this typically means that it can either be sold or used by the company to make product or service that can be sold. Liabilities are amount of money that a company owes to others. These include all kinds of obligations like money borrowed from a bank to launch a new product. Shareholder equity is sometimes called capital or net worth. It is the money that will be left if a company sold all of its assets and pay all of its liabilities. The leftover, the leftover money belongs to the shareholders or the owner of the company. <clears throat> a company balance sheet is set up like the basic accounting equation show above. Okay. <clears throat> the following formula summarizes what a balance sheet shows. Assets are equal to the liabilities plus shareholder equity. Mm, a company assets have to equal or balance the sum of its liabilities and shareholder equity. <laughs> what about if they're not? Yeah. <clears throat> A company balance sheet is set up like the basic accounting equation show above. On the left side of the balance sheet, the company lists their assets. On the right side, yeah, on the right side, they list their liabilities and shareholder equity. Sometimes balance sheets show assets at the top, followed by liabilities, with shareholder equity at the bottom. Assets are generally listed based on how quickly they will be converted in cash. Mm -hmm. Assets are generally listed based on how quickly they, they will convert into cash. Curing assets are things a company expected to convert to cash within one year. Mm. A good example is inventory. Most companies expect to sell their inventory for cash within one year. non curing assets are things that a company does not expect to convert to cash within one year or that will be take longer than one year to sell. non curing assets include fixed assets. Fixed assets are those assets used to operate the business but that are not available for sale, such as trucks, office furniture, and other property. Liabilities are generally leased based on their due dates. Liabilities are said to be either current or long term. Current liabilities are obligations a company expect to pay off within the year. Long-term liabilities are obligations due more than one year away. And it is funny because it mentioned here on that period of time, a year. A balance sheet shows a snapshot of a company assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at the end of the reporting period. It's not, it's just, it does not show the flow in and out of the accounting during the period. Mm -hmm. Income statement. Earning per share and cash flow statements. Operating activity, investing activities, financial activities. <clears throat> the footnotes statements are packed with information. Here are some of the highlights. Significant account policy and practice. Companies are required to disclose the accounting policy that are most important to the portrayal of the company financial condition and result. This often requires management most difficult, subjective, or complex judgment. Income taxes. The footnote provides detailed information about the company curing and deferred income taxes. The information is broken down by level, federal, state, local, and or foreign, and the main items that affect the company's effective tax rate are described. Pension plans and other retirement programs. The full discuss of the company pension plans and other retirement of or post-employment benefit program. 
stock options. The notes also contain information about stock options granted to officer and employees, including the method of accounting for stock-based compensation and the effect of the, me of the method on report result. <clears throat> You have financial statement ratio and calculation, inventory turnover ratio, operating margin, PA ratio, working capital, curing asset minus curing liability. Exactly, working capital. Debt to equity ratio, inventory turnover. Is the money left over in a company pay is curing liability. So, uh, okay, <clears throat> we're going to wrap this uh, by, yeah, that'll be all for this video. Uh, so, take care. Bye-bye.